have a job to do, get us more time and get this damn railroad built. That damn Chinaman's a troublemaker. Put me out! To hell with him! No! How can we help our Chinese neighbors get fair treatment? Lady, the Dred Scott decision clearly states Negroes, Mexicans, copper-toned Indians, and yellow-skinned coolies cannot testify against Americans. Sing, your brother was a good man. A good man does not deserve to die that way. It's not illegal to kill a child. A cow? Yeah. <laughs> I believe that America was a land of freedom and opportunity. We have a chance here. on! Blasting mines, clearing mountains, building railroads, it will never end! Are you afraid of being a powder monkey boy? Your brother you go up there. You get blown up. You ungrateful bastard. I am not afraid of you. Stay in your place, and everything will be better for you in the end. Anger is the stuff that great leaders are made of, if channeled correctly. This is America, Sam. What are you doing? Breaking you out of here. Come on, let's go. And it's time for us to go hunt China. Three hundred dollars. Every time we brought back a lot. Get off my property. Dirty bastard's been harboring criminals. Don't you dare! No! No! Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. If I ever get out of this alive. What we have is a big problema con los mexicanos. Mexicanos! And los americanos. You got something to say? If you and the railroad are responsible for my brother's death, you will pay for it. Say it now. I am somebody. I am. It's your lucky day. Hello, welcome to Ion Entertainment. I'm Donna Lee Heising, and today we're so excited to be in legendary actor Aki Young's beautiful home with his wife Conchita. And uh, we're going to be doing an interview with Aki about all of the amazing things that he's doing now. I used to be a rock and roll singer. <laughs> I, I had the first hit record on Frank Sinatra's label uh, called Trade Winds. And uh, just a side story, I was co-starring in a movie with Steve McQueen, Charlie Bronson, uh, Sinatra, The Clan, Peter Lawford, all of those guys. And... Um, I was playing a, a kachin, and so everybody wanted to, to meet Sinatra. You know how women mm -hmm. are crazy. They'd come up to me and say, look, I'll do anything for you. Just introduce me to the man. So anyways, I, I didn't bother. So they kept a lot of the ladies off of the stage. So one day, I'm sitting, waiting. I'm, I, I did this, and I'm playing all day, all night, Mary Ann. And all the little kids around, the Asian kids, they were mm -hmm. dancing, you know. And here comes Sinatra. Hey, you can sing, man. I like what you can do. How would you like to record for me? I said, Frank, I, I'm not a singer. He said, look, you just go tell Mo Austin, who happened to become later one of the greatest music men. He ran all of Warner Brothers music and everything else. Tell him to give you some money and go make a demo. So I went in, walked in very timidly to this gentleman, and I said, Mr. Sinatra, he said, yeah, he told me already. Here's $1,000, go make a record. 1961. So I go and I make this demo called Trade Winds, and they loved it. Then they gave me thousands of dollars and studio, you know, to go to record it, and it became, it was in the top five in Los Angeles. And um, 
It started to break, but unfortunately, there were some situations which I couldn't go on the road because I was acting. So the record didn't really move beyond. But I have to say, I was the first Asian American whose record went into the top 100. Wow, that's like great. Apples, right? <laughs> I did subsequently record more records. I've got a couple of, I also produced, I've got a gold album. I can show you that later up on the wall. But I've produced many other singers, including myself. And presently, if you go to YouTube and punch in Aki Aliong, you can see me singing about eight different songs. So that's, that's about my singing career. But I started acting in New York in 1955 in the Broadway play called mm -hmm. Tea House of the August Moon. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a fantastic experience. I was a 17-year-old that was never on a stage, never acted. They needed a goat boy, somebody that was young. I looked like I was 12. And I was living in the ghetto. I come from Brooklyn, Bed-Stuyvesant, and uh, making 75 cents an hour, pushing a rack down Broadway, <laughs> mm -hmm. setting up pins in a bowling alley before the automation came in for 75 cents, being an usher in a theater, cleaning traps out of washing machines for 75 cents an hour. And... Uh, on Saturdays, for 25 cents, you go to a movie and to see three movies, and then you buy three <laughs> days stale bread. You know, that, 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 was my, that was my whole frame of mind. And hoping that one day that I would be able to make twice the amount of money I worked when I was working summers time. 40 hours times 75 is $30. And I was hoping that if I would ever make $60 to double it, I could get married, I could have a family, <laughs> living in the ghetto. That was a ghetto mentality. So were you by yourself in the ghetto? You didn't yeah, have yeah, your family no, there? I just had my mother, but I was uh, estranged from my mother because she remarried somebody else, and I was kind of jealous, so I was living mm -hmm. on my own. But to make a long story short, I accidentally got into Tea House of the August Moon, because um, as fate and God has always blessed me and led me, and I walked in there, there was hundreds of people. I walked on the stage and they said, this is uh, Aki, you can play the gold boy. And they told me to sit on stage. I sat on stage and after about 40 people came on and left, the lights went up and two, three white gentlemen stood up and say, Congratulations, you are now in the first national road company of Tea House of the August Moon. Wow. <laughs> and then, and then Mr. <laughs> Mr. Cohen, I'll never remember, forget his name. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So after everybody left, I went up to Mr. Cohen and I said, Mr. Cohen, you know, you're talking about agents. I don't know what an agent is. I don't have one, okay? Mm -hmm. um, how much does it pay? He says $75 a week. I said, wait a minute, you're kidding me. <laughs> so then he turned away, was walking, and then I was, Miss, Mr. White, Cohen, Mr. Cohen, are you, did you say $75? He says, yes. He said, you don't want it? I said, no, 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 I'll take it, I'll take it. Uh -huh. So I went for <laughs> double the money, and on top of that, they paid me $50 a week extra to take care of the goat. <laughs> and for two years, I put $50 a week away in the bank in 1955 mm -hmm. that's, while that's I traveled great. all over the United States and then I went back and then I played the, a different role on Broadway again later on. So that was the beginning of my career and um, after that, uh, within a, a, a less than a month, I'm walking down Broadway. Well, when I was in Chicago, I went to the Goodman Theater. Mm -hmm to study acting, and I used to go every night when on stage. I used to go backstage and, you know, and, and watch Burgess Meredith and all the actors, uh -huh. and, and I was fascinated. And um, I would go up to Mr. Meredith and say, Mr. Meredith, why did you say it like that? And he said, hey, leave me alone, boy. Go, go study acting. Go study mm -hmm. acting. So I learned 
about acting from the best actors on stage. Yeah. Doing every night, and then I would rehearse. I would go on stage, and I would pretend that I was not feeling well. I was sick, and uh, the director flew in, you know, to get notes after the show gets there. Mm -hmm. And after he gave the notes to everybody, and this is something I would like to share with your audience. Okay. He told Mr. Meredith, he said, Mr. Meredith, that joke you did got two laughs. He said, yeah, two laughs, fantastic. And the director said, well, that's good. However, I would appreciate it if you do not do the physical movement which makes the second laugh because it's taking away from the intent of what the writer meant. And he said, do not make people laugh. Let them laugh. Oh, wow. And then he turned to me and he said, I enjoyed your performance, Aki. Everybody turned around and looked at me. I had no lines. <laughs> but I was so concentrated. I was so much a part of what I was doing. And this is the why I'm such an excellent actor is because I was never preconditioned to socialism. I didn't have any negativity. I wasn't afraid. I was like a naive child. Mm -hmm. And some of the greatest actors from Actor Studio, and I've studied there, is that you bring out the truth, the naivety, you know, and in order to create, you must be free. Mm -hmm. And the reason actors have problems is because they have preconceived notions of life, of their own personalities, their problems when they're growing up. So that interferes with the freedom. I just did the red carpet and um, on this show where they were honoring Cyrus Wong, who was 105 years old. Mm -hmm. And a woman walks up to me, I'm with my wife. Mm -hmm. And she says, Aki, Aki, how are you? And she says, I haven't seen you for 35 years. She remembered me from New York and she said, you know what? Because when I was acting, you told me how to be simple, how to be truthful, how to be honest, and I want to thank you. And that happens all the time. I've never taken a dime and I don't teach. Mm -hmm. I could make a lot of money if I would just advertise a shingle. I would have done over 200 movies and television. And people would love to be able to learn from me. But I don't sell my art. When I see somebody that I care for and I think they have talent, I donate it. And that's what it is. You give, the Bible says, sow and you shall reap. Mm -hmm. If you sow good things, you will get good things back. So I keep sowing and I keep getting it back. So I'm sorry for diverting, but no, you've helped me a lot. So. <laughs> well, anyways. But anyways, my first job after Tea House, one month later, I'm walking down the street, right on Broadway and 45th Street, and something came to me. Like God whispered to me, he said, I, I was terrible at, 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 at school at, you know, at, in Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, the Goodman Theater, which is one of the greatest theaters in, in the United States. But I couldn't play Dr. Fox at the Alamo. I couldn't play Davy Crockett. <laughs> and, uh -huh. and I'm walking, and the spirit said to me, Hey, you're a little Chinaman. You're gonna, that's <laughs> who you're going to be. <laughs> you're not going to be Davy Crockett. And then I walked from there, and then a guy said, Hey, you're going to go with me to the audition? I said, What audition? He said, They're auditioning for Houseboy. Okay, I walk in there, put my name down. They said, you're not on the list. I said, yeah, well, I walk into the room, and who's sitting there but the greatest director in the world, I know now, um, not Steven Spielberg, but William Wyler. Oh. He's one of about 14 Academy Awards. Anyways, uh -huh. I don't know who Mr. Wyler is. Mr. Wyler says, who are you? I said, well, my name is Aki Aleong. I just did... 800 performances of Tea House. I was on the road with it, and uh, he kept engaging me in talk and talk, and I'm talking. And then he said, 
you know what? Here's the script. Go home and read the part of the blackmailer. I never read in English. Oh, okay. <laughs> I go home, read and come back, and I get the role. Starring Sir John Mills, wow. Michael Rennie, Siobhan McKenna, and Anna Mae Wong. And the only reason he did that was because he had promised Anna Mae Wong a role in a big movie, and he didn't cast it. He casted a German who won an Academy Award. So this was a 90-minute live, like Playhouse 90. Mm -hmm. And he said he would only do it if she did it. So he paid her back by starring her in this movie. Oh, so and that's how I started on television. Well, so you started at the top with Frank Sinatra <laughs> and then with this job. So, and you've worked steadily I all know. that time. Um, tell us what you've been doing lately. Oh, well, I just got back from... Well, last year I co-starred with Jean-Claude Van Damme in okay. Pound of Flesh, which my company and my partner's company produced in China. Um, That's I, Henry Luck? Yes, Henry Luck. Mm -hmm. I just came back from shooting two movies in China and Thailand. One is called Road to Hell, which is a Chinese television movie. And the other one is Grandpa the Assassin, which is part two. Road to Hell, Henry asked me, could he adapt my original script, mm -hmm. Final Chance? So he adapted that for China. Okay. So now what I'm doing is that I will start shooting, which will be starring you. <laughs> the second part of it, which would be called My Grandpa the Assassin. And I'll be playing an 81-year-old MF assassin, badass guy, okay. killing people. But I work for the agency, so I'm not a, I'm not a, you know, I, I'm doing, I'm working for, for the country. I'm doing the things that the country wants to get done to protect the citizens of the United States and whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I, I just... Uh, we had to go to Thailand to get shots of the helicopter, army helicopter, and so forth. And I'm using the the concept of starting off in China. Okay. And then I had to flee China. Uh, I retired, and I came back to my little old house here with my garden and my dog. Mm -hmm. And I'm retired, but unfortunately... The CIA found out that I'm here, and they need... They come to me and say, look, we need you desperately. You're the best, and you're the only man capable for the job. And I still come retired. But they blackmail me and force me to come back into the business. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's, it's, it's a very interesting story. I'll tell you something. I've been doing this for 63 years. Wow. And out of the top three scenes in my life... In my career, the one I did in Thailand is one of the top three. It was a scene in a Buddhist temple where there were all real Buddhist temple with all the Buddhas around it, gated area, and a fantastic, beautiful temple. Mm -hmm. I don't know how Henry Luck got to get that as a location, but he must have. He must have donated a lot of money. <laughs> a temple. <laughs> a temple. <laughs> he opened the temple and the big Buddhas and all the pictures. And the story is about that my granddaughters and my grandson was kidnapped. And uh, I found out that they were at the temple. Okay. So I opened the door and there it is. And there's three bodies on the ground. And um, when I opened the first one, my granddaughter raises up and stabs me. But then I had brought a hypodermic needle and I just injected it and I said, darling, dear daughter, um, rest peacefully, grandpa would be with you. And she dies, but that took four minutes 
and I with so much tears, and they had four cameras. Mm -hmm. And what happened was that when it was finished, there was so complete silence. No one in China had ever seen a scene like that. Then I had to go to my grandson, who was dead, and I said a prayer and covered him. Then I had to go to my son, who has been killed five days earlier, and he's all white, and I had to say a prayer for him. It turns out that the story is that I was supposed to kill a bad general, and when I went there, his guard jumped me. I shot his guard, but as, and when I was about to shoot him, his little daughter came out from behind a chair, and I couldn't shoot him. Uh -huh. So I let him go, and, but as I left, I took a big suitcase of drugs, and then my son was going bankrupt, so I gave him the drugs. I'm a CIA, I'm not a, you know. Mm -hmm. And he took that, and they got into the drug business, saved his business, and now the daughter wants to take over, his son wants to take over, and my son is going crazy, and they're all fighting each other to kill each other to take power. It's about power. Okay. So, and then they try to kill me because I'm in the last one too. So, it's about a family struggling for power. Okay. But what I'm doing is that I'm taking the best parts of that, adding that to embellish when I'm here. Okay. The character, the same character, and what I have to do. You follow me? Yeah. And this takes place in America, and uh, it ties in very easily the way I've rewritten the whole thing. But okay. the backstory, other than killing, is the fact that my grand, my d my granddaughter, daughter, this is my great great granddaughter, is dying. Of, she needs a bone marrow transplant. Okay. And they can't find me. They don't. My son, illegitimate son here, hates me and can't find me. So the question is, can they find me in time? Because there's no more hope for the for the seven year old girl to live. Okay. Or before they kill me, because I've I've gone against them finally, and I refuse to do the last shooting. This is the one that you're going to be involved in, mm -hmm. and um, board of directors, two thousand one, two thousand two. The National Board of Screen Actors Guild. I was on the board in eight in nineteen. 57 or 58, I don't remember, and back then. So, as the nas as a national board member, and being the only <laughs> Asian, uh, I was the co-chair of the EEOC. You know what the EEOC is? That's the Equal Opportunities, part of the United States government, which Every major corporation has to have. They mm -hmm. give statistics. So SAG was that. So I was the head of that. Also, I was the president of the president of SAG's Diversity Affirmative Action. It was our job, it was my job, to try and get some kind of inroads into our white industry to get people of color work. Back then, only four, back in the 60s, only four or five or six, seven percent of the actors in the union were people of color. Oh. So by fighting to get more opportunities, more opportunities, we have now gotten to a point wherein you are seeing what's happening on television. You have more shows of diversity. Yeah. Now, I was president of MANA, the Media Action Network for Asian Americans, which 25 years ago started. And uh, in 2000, there were no people of color, in black, brown, yellow, Asian, whatever, okay. on television. And we boycotted the networks and forced them to offer a memorandum stating that they would hire diversity directors. Oh. That was the beginning. So they promptly went out and hired four black women 
No men, four black women. You know why? Because the government said if you hired a black woman or Asian woman or any woman, you got an extra point. You hire a guy, you get one point. <laughs> you hire a guy, woman, you get two points. Okay. So the studios were smart. And being black, and that was a big thing coming in, they had four black women. Okay. They were great women. They did great jobs, especially Paula Madison. She was, she was just fantastic. She's a great woman. This, mm -hmm. this is a book of, she's part Chinese, black oh, and Chinese. Okay. Samuel Lowe, Finding, Samuel, finding Her Grandfather. Mm -hmm. Anyways, um, so they tried the best that they could. We did make a lot of inroads. And we fought. Right now, I have secret documents which were given. We get from the networks all the casting data. I can tell you how many Asians are working, how many blacks are working, how many Hispanics are working. Mm -hmm. We keep that on a percentage, and we go to the networks. If they fall down in one category, we hammer them and say, you better change. This has made the difference, and now... We are ready to do that with the film industry. Well, that's great. This is an hour-long show, but this has been fascinating, Aki. And we'll see some of the history of the Chinese when Railroad to Hell comes out next year. Oh, by and the way, by the way, by mm -hmm. the, the name of the group is MANA, the Media Action Network for Asian Americans. It's non-profit. Please go to YouTube and punch us up on the internet. We like donations. We invite anybody to come. It doesn't matter who it is. If you're interested in diversity, then please contact us. We have one meeting a month. That's in Chinatown at 7 o'clock, 7.30. So we invite everybody to come down and participate. So we doesn't. It, it, it's about inclusion. It, it's about non traditional casting. It's mm -hmm. about showing the realities, about coming together. It's about love. We never get, we don't get paid. We, we don't have any money, as a matter of fact. I'm appealing. We need donations. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so. Oh, good cause. Uh, yeah. Mana, Media Action Network for Asian Americans. Well, you already see the success with, if you turn on your TV, <laughs> you see all of the people of color. And also, look for my Grandpa the Assassin, because it's going to have one of Aki's top three favorite scenes. And he's yeah, such a great yeah, actor. Yeah. I just can't wait to see that scene. Yeah, I got okay. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> Thank you, Aki. Okay. That was wonderful. I, I